These guys are definitely cute, but it's best not to get too attached to them because, like any farm animal, they're part of our food chain and destined for a dinner plate near you sometime soon. And he went with a quack and a waddle and a quack in a flurry of eider down. The Kent family farmed 200 acres near Arklow in County Wicklow, where Sean and Janet and their four children raise a variety of livestock. Well, it's a, a mixed farm. We have uh, dairy cows, a small dairy herd of 28 to 30 cows, and then we would have cattle. We rear about 75 cows a year, and then we have a geese and duck enterprise as well. We hatch geese and hatch ducks. While Sean concentrates on the poultry business, Janet looks after the dairy herd, which is small enough to be kept in the traditional way. I really do like the cows, and um, when you only have 28 cows, they're all pets. So you could be talking to them coming in in the morning or whatever, and it's very good for the children too. They really like helping with the milking, and they're very quiet cows, especially we have a number of jerseys who are real pets. Marianne, you're the boss around here. Not really. <laughs> do you have to do any jobs yourself? Not really. Sometimes help with the cows and stuff like that. And feeding the cows. <laughs> feeding the calves. What do you do on the farm? Uh, bed the uh, calves and uh, feed them hay. What about Christmas time? Is it busy around here at Christmas? Yeah. What do you have to do? I uh, do plucking and stuff for the, with the geese. Is that not a bit gross? I it just has to, to be done. And do you ever eat goose or...? Yeah, yes. at Christmas. Okay. What's it like? It's nice. Hatching duck and goose eggs by the thousand is no easy task, but Sean's scientific training has helped him to build a business supplying other farmers with baby ducklings and goslings to rear for the table. It's very, very difficult to hatch geese um, because, because of the nature of the shell. Uh, we developed a technique for hatching the geese here, uh, for our own geese, uh, and it grew from there, selling goslings, and today we have 500 breeding geese, and we, would we hatch thousands of goslings every year. The geese um, start laying towards the end of February. Um, the eggs are collected every morning. One egg is left in the nest, so when they come in during the day, um, they'll say, oh, there's the nest where I laid my egg this morning, and they lay more in the nest. Now, there are a number of geese that do lay outside, and, but it's the same spots they lay every year, so you know at 12 o'clock every day you go out and you pick the eggs under the hedge, in the, down along the field, They're the same nest the whole time. Um, so that's, that's quite a procedure, but it has to be done because the crows will just sit waiting for the eggs. Um, we had one nest one year where we were, I was standing there waiting for it to lay and the crow was standing there and he still got the egg. There's never a quiet moment on this farm here. Even when the work is all done, you can hear the quacking and the squawking in the background. Yeah, well, particularly with small ducks and geese, they have to, you don't just feed them twice a day, you have to feed them every couple of hours. So even if you're finished in the evening, uh, you know, you go back out a couple of hours later and make sure they have uh, water and food going to bed and they're dry beds as well, because if their beds aren't dry, um, they could be dead in the morning. They just smother each other when they're not, if they're not having enough dry beds to sit out on. Geese have a reputation for being aggressive, but Sean and Janet have studied animal behavior and know how to get the best from their flock. Geese are known as a phylopatric species. They get attached to a place and to the group that's in that place. They don't like uh, changes of their environment, especially when they reach adulthood. And they are very defensive. Uh, they're also a very long-lived species. So they can live for many years, 30 years or more. And they also have a very low reproduction rate, very few goslings. In wild populations of geese, maybe only 17% of them will reproduce in any one year. Then they don't need to reproduce because they live so long. They have actually quite a lot of common humans. Humans live a long life and uh, have a low reproduction rate relative to other species. Each house has its own bunch of geese. And if you, if you put one goose by accident into the wrong house or she goes in by accident, uh, you'll hear it very quickly that there's murder. So you have to go and take her out or him out. Otherwise, they could actually be dead in the morning. They're very aggressive. They have a very strong structure in their own house. Now, when they're not in the breeding mode, um, you can mix houses, no problem. But when they're in breeding mode from February to the end of June, um, you have to be very careful where you put them. Sometimes the females can be aggressive if you're trying to pick eggs and she's sitting on the nest. So they can be very aggressive too. And I wouldn't go into a house without a stick. Not to beat around that, but just to put the stick over her head while I'm taking the eggs out. Um, so they could, because they can hit you with this, um, this wing bone here, could actually break your leg if they were, if you annoyed them enough. Um, I have to say I was terrified of them at first. 
But now, I, you know, you get used to it and they're lovely. I wouldn't be without them. There was a time when the goose was the traditional dish on the dinner table at Christmas time. And as a result, geese like these were found in farmyards all over the country. So why did turkey take over? A goose takes a lot longer period to grow. Uh, you can fatten a turkey uh, in a matter of weeks, but a goose is many months. You have hatch your goose in March or April or May, and then you have to maintain it on grass until September, October. And then there is a, a short fattening period with geese, you know, six to eight weeks, and it's mainly grain diet. The goose, does it taste any different from a turkey? How would you describe it? Well, it's a brown meat. Turkey is a white meat. So they do taste differently. Their cooking of them is much shorter period because they're, they're not as heavy and the, the, the meat is more evenly distributed over the body. Breeding and fattening geese is a highly specialised enterprise that demands a lot of know-how, so Sean's background as a behavioural zoologist really helps. What you're doing is mimicking what goes on in nature. Geese migrate. They usually migrate to a grazing ground in winter. And to prepare to, to, to migrate, they eat uh, a large amount of food in a short period of time to put on store in fat. And the technique of fattening a goose is really to catch them when they are getting ready to migrate. It's the end of a cycle for them. They are uh, finished fattening. They need then to migrate, as it were. So really you're only capturing them when they are ready to move. When the geese are fat and ready to move, there's only one place for them to go, into the dairy to get killed and plucked for the Kent family's loyal customers. I'm sure you have people queuing up outside the gate here in the run-up to Christmas, do you? Yeah, well we have a lot of uh, customers that we've had for years, so you can predict nearly what day they'll come and it, Christmas Eve particularly is very busy. Um, but it's nice because a lot of them will bring a sweet or something with them as well. It's, it's a, a social very nice, thing. It's a very social thing and it's very, very nice. And so the fat geese go to their destiny while the breeding flock live on, breeding and laying the eggs that will produce next year's Christmas feast. Christmas is a 